So I haven't streamed in a while. Uh, how's my mic? Because I've unplugged it, I had to plug it back in again. The camera is scuffed. As I'll get out. Aiden. Two years pockets. Thanks for the sub. <laughs> Two years indeed. That's hot. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Aiden. Two whole years. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to plug in my earbuds in just a second. I got a haircut a couple weeks ago. I think we already talked about that. Uh, so the deal is today, sub VOD review, going to do that. Plus going to go over some American Tornado plus British Hurricane at some point. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. I got some hot tea. My voice has been resting all week. It feels a little better, so that's a plus. Sorry I missed you when you were reviewing my VOD. Thanks. So oh, I'm not, no, I'm not sorry at all. I, I appreciate you not being there. Honestly, like watching through your VOD kind of made me nostalgic for the days when I, di I just didn't know that you existed. Uh, that was a, a simpler and happier time. Uh, but you're welcome uh, and thank you for the subscription uh, for a whole month. So I appreciate that. I uh, hope everyone's having a lovely Christmas uh, time so far. Um, we're going to try and make this fun uh, and also angry. Uh, that won't take much effort though. Uh, but uh, yeah, I managed to get some replay codes from one of the American Tornado players. Uh, who I coached previously, so we've got those replay codes, and we'll go through what you guys request for the pro analysis. I'm gonna get my earpuds, earpuds, earpuds. I'm gonna plug up my earpuds real quick. Um, I'm gonna do that really quick. I have this humidifier going because it's like been helping my like the dry air, you know. So hopefully this doesn't like explode. Oh, there, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see how things go. Okay, I'm gonna plug up. <laughs> if I cough like an, uh, you know, a chain smoker, it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay, let's do this. Um, let's see where are we at. Um, sub vods. Where are we at? Where are we at? I have to catch up to make sure that I actually... Josh never updated his. Neither did Pear. We did Akvod Sombra. I think we're on Sigma Gibraltar? Let's actually see if this code works. That's going to be the real test. By the way, when I come back, the plan is to be changing some things about VOD reviews. Which I will get more into that when we come back from break. Because we're going to do this VOD review, uh, I'm going to do this stream, take a break for the holidays, um, coming back, and then I'm going to go over, like we're going to we're gonna start streaming again when I come back. Hey! Okay, let's, uh, let's actually look at this free play as it work. Hey! Doesn't work, doesn't work, Jedi doesn't work! Can a mod in chat, Black Dracon? Oh, hair check. Holy cow. Thank you for redeeming hair check because it made me check this. Check this out. I did this, okay? I don't know why I messed with my volume. But then I, I go up and I'm like, oh, this is at like 90. You, I, if anybody had subbed or done anything, I would have instantly been deaf. Instantly been deaf. But yeah, hair check. I mean, what the, like, listen, we've reached a point so there's not really a whole lot to check. It's just there. Do you see this? Do you see this? There you go. It's there. You're welcome. Uh, next we have. Okay, it can. I don't think you're next, AFK noob. I don't think you're next. You're not till a little bit further down the line. Yeah, because you just posted one. I still have to catch up on all these idiots. So, Taja. We're gonna do you, 3.7K Hanamura. Wash Diva gameplay. Well, that's just exactly what I wanted to be reviewing today. So just to clarify, at least one sub VOD review, probably just one sub VOD review. Then we're gonna go on from there and do some pro analysis on Ball Sigma, um, all that kind of stuff. Is analysis later on? Yes. Analysis is after this VOD review is done. Once this VOD review is done, we go on from there. Um, okay, so let's, uh, we're gonna do some Masters Diva. We'll go ahead and get started. Sounds like you have a jet engine going on in the background. Like, what is this? Does anyone else hear this? 
It sounds like you have a, like a mi like a miniature generator going on right behind you. The like like the the funny thing is is Reaganomics actually doesn't have a functioning brain. He just has a generator that like the like like powers some of his basic like like motor skills, just so that he can actually walk, eat, and drink. So whatever we see in this vod, if it if it, if the gameplay tanks. It's not his brain functioning because he never had one to begin with. It's the, the quality of the generator suddenly, you know, like like a power spike, you know? Okay? So it is literally going to be bot gameplay. It's robot gameplay here. How was my day? My day's been pretty good so far. That's not your bad. It's my bad. I'll, I mean, I'll gladly shift blame onto you if you, want to, if you want to take full responsibility and say my bad, then be my guest. Yes, you're bad. Everything is your bad. Merry Christmas Eve Eve. Yeah, well, aren't you clever? Find new insult. Listen, buddy, I'm not going to eat. You're not even worth the time to take the time to new insult. Like I could, I'm, you're not even worth the time to pull up a web page type, find it. No, I'm not even going to take the time. Okay. There's like a minimum level of effort of like breathing and thinking and even reading your name. I don't even want to get to that point. I've already given you more than that at this point. That one isn't new. I think chief, I don't care. Black Dracon. Your mama's not new. All right, do you really want a new insult? Do you really want a new insult? Give me a second. Give me a second. I, 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 I sat, the, okay, I literally sat the other day and I thought about some of these things and somebody sent me something as well, which was really helpful. Okay, new insult. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Nunchi, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers would be disappointed of you. Mr. Rogers would have a big fat sign in his happy little neighborhood says, Nunchi, stay away. There would be a restraining order. In fact, none, like, Mr. Rogers might actually hire a hitman to remove you entirely from the serve. Okay, I'm, I'm back on the bottom. Master's Diva, what is your composition? You haven't showed us tab, I don't think, since you've actually, like, queued in. Can you press tab, please? Please press tab. I'm begging you. I see Monkey, I see Soldier, I see Lucio. Please, I'm begging you. What is the audio quality? It sounds like you're literally like like tunneling this through like aluminum foil. Sigma soldier. Um, oh, I too enjoy randomly boostering through chokes, having no idea what I'm up against. I, I really that that is that is a plus. Mm -hmm. That's like speeding up to 65 miles an hour because you don't know what the speed limit is. Okay, so it looks like we have Sigma Hog, Junkrat. I'm walk up on them, I, I still don't know what you're playing. Can you please press tab? Please, I'm, I'm begging you. I'm I'm on my knees begging you. I don't know what you're playing. Is my mic still working? I just bumped it. Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, so I, I'm just going to have to take a guess here and assuming that you're playing some form of dive. You're clearly playing Winston Diva Lucio, uh, but I don't really know what your DPS is besides the soldier. I don't know what your secondary healer is. Regardless, you are playing tempo dive. So the, your job, in a nutshell, in this composition is let your monkey like let your monkey take flanks and get around the comp enemy um like basically stage a dive your job is to help your monkey stage dive by like because like if monkey just goes in like right now it's not going to be particularly good um because uh they're going to be able to like just s key out and spam your monkey out your monkey if possible would like to be able to get to this like clump without using jump which means he either needs to like flank or like go around or maybe you know pressure point to force him to come closer but like you need to your monkey needs to be able to get onto this safely and then when he does actually get onto this not just the pathing but like once he actually does dive or zap or, or something when he's doing something like this he needs your support this is i see sigma hog zen mercy and i think junkrat so that's obviously a lot of damage that is also a lot of damage that you can eat uh, you know, there's the Sigma spam. I mean, we don't have to go down the list, but there's a lot that you can eat. So your job here is to prioritize assisting your monkey in and to be looking for pressure yourself on squishies as you go through. Points well spent, you think? I mean, you would be stupid enough to think that. This is a little loud. So you're... you're, you're ooh. So this is the important thing though. What do you guys see here? What is what is risky? What is what is what is really scary right now? 
what do you get what, like right now what what's what's the issue already we literally just went over this so this is a challenge for you guys that were in my stream what was like a week and a half ago when we did another diva vod review what's the error right here that actually almost significantly throws this fight what's the issue here he's playing through a cup and string telephone oh we're not even we're not even there yet we're not even at that level of technology you're taking too much spam exactly because what's the what like that's a zen right i mean i swear that's a zen or that's a mercy either way you're taking too much spam exactly which leads you to what mistake it's not a mistake but it's a necessary consequence of you taking too much spam when you're not doing anything which then what's the error here do you see this do we see this and do you also see this this right here do you see this guys you're late to a dive and your backline got pressured because here's the thing technically while your monkey is flanking they could push and kill your backline technically it's a little scary too and it means that they're more vulnerable to a dive if they do in other words this sigma is like way more killable here than he is here but they could do that they could do that right and if you're going grabbing a mega not only are you potentially out of sync with your team when they dive but it also means that if they do decide to go in, you can't possibly peel for your backline here. Because there is a circumstance here where, you know, they're completely ignoring your monkey and they're hard going backline and you have to peel for your backline instead. Like, as D.Va, you need to be flexible with who you're going for. Like, you just kind of have to read, react. You could probably say it's probably helped my monkey, but we don't really know. They're going for your backline <coughs> and your monkey's diving in and you're late to really contribute to either. Because right now you should already be in on top of them killing you know either the mercy or matrixing your monkey or you should be punishing this like this load of horse maneuver right here one or the other and you're late for both why because you took too much poke going in and you know you're late the mercy gets out <coughs> This is a tricky situation for me. I think you should have prioritized getting your monkey out over killing the Mercy here uh, once you saw her HP. So this is why, like, this is why your timing was important because it, optimally you would know what HP this Mercy was at because you're going after this Mercy like she's 50 HP, which she's not. She's essentially full, which means that you should definitely be prioritizing matrixing your monkey. Does that make sense? Like, if you can keep get your monkey out alive versus killing your Mercy, that, that's where it gets tricky, right? But you're not going to kill this Mercy by yourself. And so you should need to be able to prioritize and get your monkey out. That's like saying, I need to either, like, you know, I need to either like, get, out of, like, get out of the way of the train or I need to stop the train. Well, you've done neither right now. You're not gonna kill the Mercy and you're not gonna be able to get your monkey out. So now you've just kind of done somewhere in between and now you're a failure. So now you're a failure, I say. Now, you, you've, you've been a failure for some time. So at this point, you really just need to get out. So I'd go ahead and start migrating towards this direction and then look to use my boosters out. But you you just cannot get DMAC now. You just can't. You just you just can't. You just really I'm, I'm begging you not to. Watch for hook. Oh, oh, blessings, please. It's just so important sometimes as Diva to just understand that you are just an absolute worthless contributor in these poke stages. Like the, the best thing you could do right now is absolutely nothing. Now Close to visor. That, that's a little ambitious, but maybe. Just don't take damage, please. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Okay, right now. This is much better than retirement. What just happened? Merry Christmas. Thanks for everything this year. Oh my gosh, Savvy Drone. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for everything this year. I appreciate it. You see, you guys take that as a lesson. That's gratefulness. You bunch of Scrooges. Do you know how many cars I have? Five. Why don't I have six? And only one of them was over six figures. Shame on you guys. Be more like Savvy Drone. Take all that hard-earned money and put it in my pockets. Idiots. None of you guys deserve anything that I give you whatsoever. Thank you so much for the $50 donation. That was super generous. Okay. Again, it's, it's like, it's still really hard for me. 
Here's oh, your money. three dollars. Thanks, Baggins. That's great. I'll be sure to buy a Twizzler with that. Well done. This is uh, part of the reason why I'm struggling a little bit right now is because I still don't know what DPS you're running. So I don't know whether what you're doing is good or bad. Um, if you're running more like poke style DPS, then those guys are like, you don't necessarily need to help this as much. Um, oh, yeah, this is okay to help this. But like, I still like very, I would really like to know what DPS you were running. Like that would be very helpful to me. I've seen no signs of your DPS whatsoever. I think your Hanzo died, I think. I, but I don't even know if he's still Hanzo. Okay. Probably would just full matrix this. You cancel your matrix for some reason. This is just such a confusing fight. Act, unfortunate, just go ahead and die. Okay, this is our snapshot right here. This is where I would say, okay, yeah, kill the Sigma if you can, but if you your priority as Diva is to A, matrix your monkey, and B, prioritize and matrixing this damage whenever in, in, possible at all. Because if I if we look at the situation right here, when you're actually going for the dive, right here, where is the majority of the damage that's coming on you, your backline or your tank line coming from? Potentially hog, yes. Right? But it's gonna be these guys out here, right? Now, I want, this is where things are going to get a little tricky, okay? I want you guys to actually use your brain here. Do you, what, how, okay, excuse me. How should this diva be positioned against this composition? Like, don't, don't be vague and, like, non-specific. I want you guys to tell me, look at this right now. Where should our diva have been positioned herself for this fight? For doing what we just did right now, following up in the Sigma and then attempting the Matrix, where should the Diva have positioned? What should, did they do and what should they not have done? So you guys are giving me multiple different answers. Um, top left, you could go underneath, you guys could come here. You could, uh, I think you could also, this would also be a very good spot to be as well. But what do they all have in common in comparison to where this diva actually went? What did this diva do differently than what you guys are suggesting? Angles, right. And it's not just the angle, it's, it's like where you're actually positioning yourself in the fight. So like, you are not like if this is the dive if this is like where your monkey is going on you're not putting yourself inside of your monkey like what's going on here you're always like just outside like close enough to where you could actually do damage but just outside maybe you booster in and then back out again to get like that extra little bit of damage and maybe the boop damage but you're not placing yourself smack dab in the middle now why is that important there's at least three reasons why I think that's important. At least three. Maybe even more. I mean, you guys, you guys tell me what's, what's wrong with this. You can see it right here. Like, what's going on here? Okay, you take less damage, sure. Like, you're not throwing your body in the middle of a bunch of damage. You could be matrixing, matrixing that. You could be matrixing, right? What, what, how would you describe this, this section right here? Does it look like you're well aware of where everything is going and what's happening and what you need to matrix? It's complete chaos. Yeah. Yeah, Black Dracon gave me a couple things. It's just, it's literal complete chaos. You can't see anything. 
I have no idea what's going on right now, and neither do you. So let's let's break it down. Let's let me give you the, the, the reasons why. If you come in and fly here or here or whatever, following up on the signal, you're gonna do slightly less damage. Slightly. Now you're saving your micro missiles, which is wise. And micro missiles do not have fall off. They're just you know it's just like actually landing them is the issue. So if you could stay right here, you'd have better sight lines on your target. Or about the same sight lines because you're on the same target. You would have better sight lines on what you need to matrix. Because you could matrix this way and eat all of this. Right? Instead of being here and matrixing only this way, whereas the damage can get behind you and off to the side here. You see it? So, like, if I could visually draw the enemy damage as, like, a big block, right? Heck, we'll include the Lucio in this, too. This is where the damage is coming from, right? Right here. Whereas you are only, if you put yourself in the middle, you're only matrixing like this section, right? Or if we were to draw lines, you're like matrixing like this. But if you position here, you're matrixing this, and that covers all the incoming damage. You see what I'm saying? It's less chaotic, so you can selectively choose what you want to matrix and what you don't want to matrix, and who needs to be pressured, and who do you want to use your boosters on, and who should you be shooting, and who needs your matrix at that time. And you're going to be taking less spam damage. Yes, you're probably going to get hooked. Okay. Not that big of a deal. You don't mind getting hooked. It's better you getting hooked than your Winston. It's not the end of the world. Like, you getting hooked here is not a big... It's not the end of the world. What's not good is that you had a really hard time knowing what was going on. Your matrix usage was awful because you were not in a position to actually properly matrix... And you took a lot of unnecessary damage as well. Because you're playing yourself in the middle of things. You see what I'm saying? Did you take a lot of unnecessary damage there? No, you dodged a bullet. You managed to get user uh, out of your Winston bubble. But your matrix usage was awful. You weren't able to matrix properly. And things got really, really chaotic. Like, really chaotic. Right now is where you should have been from the start. Because if you had been here from the start, you could have used the boosters that you just used right now. Do you see how you went from in here to getting to where you're properly positioned too late? Which means what? What do you not have boosters for now? You see? Which now then, you know, then leads to this and, and then everything else as well. Like you could have boosted right up in this guy's face and probably killed him. Maybe you could have canceled that res. Like, there's a lot of things that you could have done with that booster and with that better initial positioning. Hey, Midget. It's really pleasurable for me to call somebody else a Midget. I, 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 can't, I can't quite explain the, the epiphany. I just like, everything becomes clear. Ah, I'm not the Midget. Somebody else is the Midget. It's pleasant. So we've seen taking too much spam pre-fight against a composition that has way very very strong capability of poking you out and then utilize like playing diva as if you're you're almost like you're playing it like a monkey i think that's the best way of describing it it's like you're diving onto a target and placing your your big fat ugly body on top of it whereas you want to be you know relatively close to it but at an angle to where you can actually see the battlefield like you need to be able to survey the battlefield when you're playing this hero if you don't or can't, you're probably in this position. Yes. This is what you want. I, in fact, getting here sooner would have been better. Because obviously you get the damage done. And what again, what has happened here? You've taken a good angle. Now you get hooked. I don't even know why you bombed this. No idea. Like, I'm shocked that you bombed that. You had 115 HP, and you could have, you had full Matrix. Like, you can waste even more of his time. Like, you're at a pretty high risk of dying here, if you're not careful. And you end up beating anyway, so that's that's not, not good. Um, but the good positioning there was good. Weird that you did micro-missiles here. 
like as you're going through him that's like a solid 150 damage you could have put there very easily potentially even killed him because it would have put him to a threshold where he would have been able to kill please use your micro missiles please now you use them like what what why I would assist your team here. Good. <clears throat> Matrix was not timed well. Go get the soldier, please. <clears throat> like if I could, if I could put <clears throat> Diva in Dive or in Mobile Comps in a nutshell, not with Brawl. Uh, I would say number one, avoid taking damage. Number two, when your main tank does something. Take an angle, but don't put yourself in the middle of the fight. Like we could, we could break down like this entire vod so far off of this diva's either uh, in too far, not properly angled, or taking too too much damage. Like that, that's that's just it right there. Like like this is the entire vod. GG's go home. I'm done. Like I'm we're done here. I'm not actually gonna be done because I I do have like you know unlike the Grinch I actually have some pity for you like peasants out there. But like that's it. Like like just just break down this entire fight of. You know, you either, like, weird ability usage, which is, like, the outlier. But just, a, like... Like, just not being in the right position at the right time. And, and, and again, it's, like, it's not even, like... It's not like it's that complicated, either. Everybody's, oh, Diva's such... No, no, no. <laughs> it's not that hard. Just get, uh, like, like, angle so that you can see, so that you can peel. Shut up, Frosted. All right. I just, I just don't care. Okay. Just, I don't care. Sh dude. Okay. Okay, Mr. Bank. I mean, I cannot imagine a more white, like, dull. You, you, you have like the, you, your name is like the personality of a blank sheet of paper. And in some cases, you know, people's names aren't really descriptive of who they are as person or people, you know? It's not the case for you, easy bot. Okay. <clears throat> I don't care about your attitude, sir. Okay, well, thanks. I'm a, I'm a little concerned here. Like, again, this, this seems a little, okay, so it seems odd. <clears throat> this is this is you know this is okay this is okay just you can't get hooked you can't take damage because your monkey is not doing anything because here's the thing I don't want you divas taking this as like oh if I get hooked everything's fine hooked spiral said no 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 you, it's okay if you get hooked when your monkey's doing something because optimally that hook is for either your DPS that are trying to follow up off of your monkey or hooking your monkey to kill him because if your monkey gets hooked and you don't have matrix he's screwed he's dead <clears throat> there's a typo. <laughs> Oh, oh, right. Banks is so much better. Banks, plural, lots of white sheets of white paper. <clears throat> but don't think, you cannot get hooked right now. Like I would be touching point and jiggling between this, like this and this little lantern crap pillar thing in here, you know? Because if you get hooked now, that's when you're gonna have to booster and run away and your monkey's gonna go in because you're gonna get chunked. Because there's gonna be no, there's no, gonna be no split. Because remember, the whole concept as tanks is doing stuff as six, six, do stuff as six, 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 six. Okay, together as a team. If you go in ahead of time and you eat a lot of spam damage before your team is ready to follow up, it's no good. Blank sheets of paper have potential. Listen, easy bot's potential as a blank sheet of paper can pretty much be surmised as that one type of paper airplane that you tried to make out of a book and it felt went about two feet before it crumpled straight in the floor. There's easy bot's potential. <clears throat> Chat, what are we doing it again? What are we doing again? What are we doing again? Do you see it? What are we doing again? What are we doing again? What are we doing again? Again! Yeah, it's not, it, it, and, 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 and it's not exactly, it's not just the target priority is, is a little sus here, you know? It's not just the target priority when there's like, you know, soldiers still alive. But what else is the problem? You're boostering into the middle of the enemy clump. Do you know where that soldier is? 
is this helping you matrix more? Like you have to understand that you're doing <clears throat> like marginally more damage of you literally just standing here. Just stand, stand right here and press W and shoot. Just press W and shoot. And then if you need to, or you see an opportunity to booster on soldier, then you can go do that. Not only do you have an easier time of saving your boosters, you have better visibility, you do about about the same amount of damage. I'm not gonna lie to you and say you do you know, more, you do about the same, a little less. But you can also matrix everything, right? Because your matrix, you'll be able to see everything in your clump. Whereas if we go forward here, like, do you see this? You have to pick and choose. I mean, these guys, these off things are stacked on top of each other. This is a perfect opportunity for you to be able to matrix is like right across here and matrix everything. But the problem is, is you're too close. And again, every single time you use boosters unnecessarily, that's a window for them to punish, a window for them to punish, a window for them to punish. Now, unlike Winston Bubble or like Immortality Field, you might not go, oh man, we lost that fight because I didn't have boosters. It's one of those things that like, it's not really obvious that you lose fights because of it, but it adds up. Like every time you misuse boosters, you get a little less value, a little less value, a little less value. Now, sometimes you'll get really punished for not having them, obviously. But the majority of the time, you won't even notice it. But I challenge you to go through the number of times that you've used boosters in the spot and say, did, it, did I really do anything with this? Did it put me in a better position? Should have I used it? Ah, what happened to the audio? Like right now, wh wh where are you going? What are you doing? Like, look, look what's happening. My phone. Believe it or not, I have people that message me and care about me. Like you're going all in on the Sigma, but the, the, the soldier's still alive. He's still, literally, the soldier in Roadhog are the people that are killing people. Like, <coughs> it, it legitimately feels like <coughs> you're like, you're the one like that's prioritizing and killing people while your entire team falls around in shambles around you. Thank you, Fossum, for that incredibly uncomfortable comment. I hope that <laughs> I'm, I'm the Automod is just there to make you feel bad. That's all it's there for. That's it. It's GG's. Don't even bum. <clears throat> okay, it's not GG's. Somehow you're. It should be GG's. You guys should not have solved this. They got that, like two kills or three kills almost instantly. I mean, anything at this point is just, you know, funny memes. Ha, they still lose, or they still win. <clears throat> what do you think, chat? Like, what do you, what do you think is going on? What, what do you think is screwing up here? <laughs> that was a test. I don't care about your opinion. Your opinion is literally meaningless to me. Now, what's the real catch here, chat? VIP? Yeah, because that's, that's definitely on my priority list today. Get up, brush teeth, work out, save orphans, give toxic VIP. That's, that's, that's definitely a priority. Like what's what? Okay, don't don't overthink this. Don't overthink this. You guys are overthinking this. Where where's monkey? Is, is what he's doing? Is what diva doing? Is what diva do? Is what this diva? Is what this diva's doing? Bad. Yeah, 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 fine. I'm not sure, is your monkey doing anything? Okay, I, th I think we're, just just be careful. Just be careful is all I'm saying. If you get hooked here, you're dead. But your monkey's not doing anything. I think what you did fundamentally, getting rid of the soldier, like prioritizing the soldier, taking away his space, taking the angle, it's fine. But your monkey's not doing anything, so just chill. Chill, 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 chill. What, where's your monkey? Ah! Run! Run! Oh, you're 
Peter's finding new and spectacular ways to make me upset. You're a shining example of mediocrity. Get him, get him. <laughs> questionable. Very questionable. Questionable to booster into a Sigma. It just feels like you have to be the center of attention. You're, you're like that really needy child. It's like we're doing like a sport activity. You know, coach is teaching you how to field grounders or how to shoot a basketball, how to kick a ball. And you're like, ah, 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 talking in some funny meme voice from some, you know, obnoxious, you know, idiot you saw on Cartoon Network. It's like, oh, I'm not the center of attention for three seconds. So I have to, I have to change that. It's like, oh, 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 my t I have to carry. I have to carry. No, like, what, what can you not just like right now? Like, what are you doing? Is, is this Sigma 1 HP? Is your team like going in? No, you're literally leading the charge. What is going on? Frosted, you tempt me. I would love it if you banned everybody. But I have, I have, I have, I have a distinct fear that somehow you'd find a way to like create some sort of socialistic po politic club of including all your friends and family. And, and now everybody, everybody that you know becomes mod. It would be like, it'd be like a mod popcalypse. You get frosted mod and then now his mom is a mod and then everybody's a mod. And, and it just, it just goes downhill from there. And we have nothing, nobody in my chat but mods. Do you want that? <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, your Lucy is pretty useless against the Scomp, I'm gonna be honest. But yeah, like, in general, you seem to always want to be the center of attention. You're always throwing yourself in the middle of these fights without actually properly taking angles and matrixing what's necessary. And it means that you're wasting your boosters, like, at a prolific rate. Prolific? Yeah, prolific. Nepotism? Yeah, exactly. Can mods ban mods? I'm not going to even give you the opportunity to see if that's the case. <clears throat> I wouldn't moderate my own mother. As in, I wouldn't give her moderator role. I would definitely moderate my own mother. Okay. <clears throat> so you're playing Hog, Diva, which is awful. Like, you really should just be off of D.Va here. Like, you're going <clears> to... <throat> I assume you're going to swap <laughs> after this fight. Because if you don't get... I mean, this might be last fight, but, you know, Hog D.Va is beyond worthless because you're committing to off angle slash spam play. And D.Va doesn't do anything unless you contest off angles really fast. <clears throat> and Hog doesn't want to play really fast. Hog can't dive. Hog can't brawl. Hog takes angles and sits there and waits and waits and waits. So you'd be better off in Sigma, uh, Ball, even Zarya. And your Hog's dead. Hoggers. <clears throat> and you've... I mean, <clears throat> that's that's tough for me. Your hog is just brain dead, and so I don't. He just stands there, like, oh, they have hook. <clears throat> they won't do anything to me. Please, Matrix. Please, Matrix, your team. Please, please, please. I'm begging you. Thank you. You could bomb this. Yeah, why not? You got nothing to lose. I might hit somebody. Nice. Okay. Now, what did I say? What did I say, chat? I, I've literally, I, I, for, for five stinking seconds, I want you not to be the one showing your big, fat, ugly schnoz up in somebody else's business and actually just play to contest the off angles that matter and to shoot what your team is shooting. Just once.
just once. I mean, we could have seen this coming. Like, Helen Keller could have seen this one coming. But that was a little low effort. But, like, honestly, like, you come in here right now. There's a soldier actively raining down fire onto your team. And you go for a hog who's not even close to your team. And not only you go for, you go all in. You're right up in this boy. Where's the soldier? Oh my gosh. Tracer, tracer please, tracer, tr please stop. Look at you. A tracer blinks behind you and you go in. You go in on a Lucio. What is your, look, and your Zen dies because of Tracer and Flux. Because he's not getting matrixed. Your mediocrity is now mediocre. I don't even know how to pronounce that word. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Please. Okay, I somehow muted my mic. <clears throat> okay, um. <clears throat> uh, New York. Meteoric. Meteoric, okay, I don't know why it's meteoric, I don't know, whatever. What? what? Like, you, you legitimately have single-handedly thrown this fight. You have put on your big boy pants and thrown this fight all by yourself. This is just like, to me, this is where I, I, I stop, like, picking on the micro, and I just feel like this guy just doesn't even f understand the fundamentals of D.Va gameplay. No, no, Frosted, you're a moron. I meant his rise in mediocrity was meteoric. As in his rot, like, medi- Dude, do I literally have to do this? Do I have to do this? Do I have to embarrass you in front of your friend's family? Of relating to her, of relating- Ha, resembling a meteor in speed or in sudden and temporary brilliance. A meteoric rise to fame. <laughs> Listen, son. I was I was in tw third grade English when you were still, you know, a sparkle in your father's eye. Is that how it said? Twinkle, whatever. Oh gosh, that one felt good. Mm. But yeah, your whole mindset's wrong. Your whole mindset. It's like <clears throat> you have to personally kill stuff, otherwise it's not going to get killed. And all you have to do is like I hate being cliche, but you are the enabler. You are what prevents the enemy, like keeps your team alive so that they can kill stuff and puts pressure and damage of your own in a location to where you can actually survey the battlefield so that you can matrix them. It's like even when you're doing damage, the majority of the time as D.Va, you're in a position to where you can peel if necessary. Five, three, five, three. Listen, Bob. <clears throat> I, I, if, if it was 1v1 me and Chuck E. Cheese, bro, I would throw you head first into the ball pit. You wouldn't even be able to swim your way out. Much less stand. Bye, Frosted. The girl clothes? What do you mean the girl clothes? I'm wearing literally men's pajama pants and I'm, oh, shoot. Oh, I'm not. I'm not wearing a brig shirt. I was wearing a brig shirt earlier. 
Yeah, everything you do is like, I have to do it, otherwise it's not gonna, I have to, I have to go in, you know, smash, 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 Holt, Colt, Colt, Colt. And, and it, it just really makes me upset. <coughs> no, it's not pants from I got from my girlfriend. I'm not even, I don't even have a girlfriend. What, to what, what clip? Yes, then I'm one set vibe and gauntlet butts, yes. Oh. <clears throat> well, you have officially, let's see here. Hog. Hog, Zen, all right. <clears throat> Good news. Tracer, is this a Torp soldier? Okay, good news. You are officially the worst hero pick on your entire team. But I won't pick on you too much for that. You could not have possibly picked a worse hero uh, at all. I mean, ironically, Winston would have been better. But yeah, you know, who am I to judge? Actually, of course I knew I, I'm an excellent person to judge. <laughs> oh, uninstall, you freak. Okay. Why are you not micro-missiling? Like, I, I, I'm just completely baffled. Like, they have a big, fat, juicy, succulent target right in front of you. And you're not micro-missling. Like, it just it baffles me. Um, they're on Tracer as well, which means that you need to be aware of your Zen in case he or she needs peel. You're on Torb, <clears throat> Soldier. Your Soldier should be able to handle the Tracer for a short period of time, and you don't want to completely abandon your Hog. But I would like you to be... You need to desperately save your boosters just in case your Zen calls real. You need to be aware... Oh, I'm sorry. Oof. Is that a word? We've now evolved to a point where Twitch chat cannot even properly say three-letter words anymore. Nah! Let's play a game that you guys have probably been playing a lot in 2020. What do I should I get irritated about today? What's the irritation, chat? <clears throat> What's the issue? Can you guys tell me what the issue is? Please? Please. Is the fringe version of oof. Okay. So it went from being a typo to admitting that you're part of one of the worst cultures in the entire universe. <clears throat> if you can even call it a culture. <clears throat> and I'm willing to take one for the team. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to admit that American culture, terrible. But, you know, American French, I'm dragging fr the French with me. Unnecessary wrist is mech for a kill. See, that's what I thought for a second. But then I paid a little closer attention to his abilities, chat. What do you see on your screen? What do you see on your screen? One HP hog, but not, that's not all. <laughs> but that's not all, folks. That's not all. You have full stinking matrix. Right, as if your culture didn't, you know, commit mass genocide at one point or another either. <clears throat> full matrix. <clears throat> and your hog is low. You're like, oh, Lucio's discorded. He's at two thirds HP. That's more of a priority than me actually keeping my teammate alive. You see what I'm saying? Like, good tracking, good finish on the kill, but you literally traded your hog for it and almost your mech too. Look at this. And now you've lost this angle. Now this angle is over. GG's, you lose. 
GG's. Your Zen dies to Tracer, you know. Oh, and by the way, you committed your boosters to it too. You committed your boosters as well. Like this, this right here is a snapshot. You guys ever, like, you know what a snapshot is, right? Like a perfect, like a perfect summation. This is the epitome. I don't know if you guys, like, you guys probably don't know what that word means, but you can look it up. It is the epitome of awful diva gameplay. Prioritizing a kill over helping your teammate with full matrix, giving up a good position for a bad position just to maybe get a kill, and also wasting your boosters. Your Zen dies. You know, theoretically here, maybe you go, oh, maybe you could have been in a position to feel for your Zen. Probably not. But your hog would have survived easily. And that, their hog probably would have died as well. So, you're fighting new and creative. Oh, speaking of failure, money folder, hello. New and creative ways to uh, embarrass me. Oh, just jump off the map next time. Don't feed them old charge. Don't say Snapchat. Okay, like that's not even that's not even like that's not even low effort meme. That's that's just like who's Snapchat? Get it? Oh, I'm a zoomer. Get it? That boomer doesn't get it. Oh, we're doing one of these things, eh? Why won't he go I see. <clears throat> Says the person who legitimately showcases beyond the. I'm, I'm not going to say. It. I'm not going to even say. It. <clears throat> There's so much I could say here. Posture check. Notice I've not even got my things in because I just can't. I just could not care less. No, stop, 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 stop. Oh gosh, what are you doing? You're by yourself, like. Let, let, let your ball's not doing anything. Why are you doing? You're playing against a Sigma Hog. You're a diva. You're playing not only against a Sigma Hog, but you're literally 1v3ing with an Ana pocket. That's not enough. Let them out. Give high ground if you need to, so that your ball can actually do something. Your ball is just now going in, and you're already demeched. Like, this is what I'm talking about. What are you doing? Look at your other tank. Let's say that you were playing hog here and your hog was sitting on point, okay? Because I don't just want to be this just about playing around the ball. No, no, no. This is about big picture, play a six. If your hog is playing here, should your diva be playing, should, would you as a diva play more aggressively here? Would your diva, if you had a hog that was just standing on the high ground right behind you and shooting them, would you, would you attempt to contest this more? Probably yes. Maybe not actually sticking your nose into the hallway, but yes, you play more aggressively because your team, you're actually fighting there. If you had an Orissa up here, sure. If you had a hog on point, no. If you had a ball that was nowhere near rolling out, no. This isn't even about diva specific feedback. This is just play as, with your tank, play with your team. If your ball is slamming their back line right now, sure. But they're not. Your ball, your entire team is nowhere to be seen. And you're sticking your face into probably the worst composition you could possibly stick your face into because you're gonna get hooked, rocked, demacked. Which, who would have thought, is almost exactly what happens. And now that you're demacked, you're visoring, how do you even win this? The tracer feeds, okay. Well, that's a plus. Now we're gonna get vertigo from watching you like run around with your like little squirty pistol. Putting on a phenomenal display of like how you could be mediocre mechanically at all things. Yeah, you just keep it, you're fine. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Ironically, you being Baby Diva has been the best thing for you because...
You are an enabler. You are an enabler. You do not put yourself in the middle of things. You avoid it. You take small little angles where you can see what you need to matrix. Play around your tank. Support your tank. Stop forcing kills. I don't know how to respond to that. I don't want to admit that this isn't acting, but, but, if it, but I don't want to... See, that's a loaded question. Who says it's baby rage acting? Shame on you. Trying to make me fall for that. Because I say, it's not baby rage acting, it's a real baby written wait. Shame on you. Shame on you. Where's the question? Okay, it's a loaded statement. It's like saying, yeah, this guy, man, he hates kids at just an unbelievable level. I'm like, no, I don't hate kids at an unbelievable level. Oh, so you hate kids at a normal level? Like, no, 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 no. Just, just, just sit down. Just close your mouth. Stop talking. Nobody cares what you think. Yeah. But I don't even have to say that. Shush, do a hair. Why? Dude, just the same. Like, what is there to check? I can't do anything with my hair. It's not long enough. There, there's your hair check. Here's a hair check. I look like the meth head behind like 7 Eleven. Congratulations. All right. <clears throat> um, Prover, Prover watch. Uh, so the. the <coughs> no. Okay. So the majority of people. That was all. I mean, there's nothing to do. That's like asking for like handouts from an, an orphan. I don't have the hair to do anything with. Blame your own apparent lack of ocular function. Um, the, the majority of people are asking me for uh, shape or sigma. Bot review. What uh, what map do you guys want to go over? From the American Tornado match, because <clears throat> I got one of the players who I know sent me the replay code so I could review it. Did you guys pick a map for me? I'll go over. Sh I will go over ball slash sigma kind of in unison, because I have I have some decent experience with that composition, but I think it will be interesting for me, like a learning experience. I will treat it like a review, but also like a let's solve what they're trying to accomplish. A lot of King's Row votes. All right, we'll do we'll do this. We'll do this. Um, wait, poll. How do the flip? Do you do a poll? Poll. Hole. Wait, which map? Uh, Gibraltar was kind of a flap. Blizz World, Nepal, KR, <laughs> Oasis. Well, what do you mean rig the pole again? Luno, du, du, Luno, oh, two things for the sub. See, there's a loaded question again. That's assuming that I've rigged the poll before. Shame on you, sit down. Okay, there's your poll. Morons. Top of your chat thing. Which map? Blizzard World, Nepal, Kings Row, Oasis. Legitimately hate every single one of you. Nepal. I'm not molding. Do you see this head of hair? I, I doubt many of you in chat can even rival this head of hair unless we're talking about like, like we could combine your armpit hair or whatever unshaved monstrosity is elsewhere on your body. Tie the pole. Wow, Blizzard World got a ton of votes. What? What happened in Blizzard World? Hope I'm having a good Christmas. Thank oh, you, Gameplayer Rab. It's nice to see somebody that can actually be appropriate and kind. 
Thank you so much for the sub. 16 months. Appreciate that. Okay. He calls me Spyro, and then he wonders why I say things like that. Okay. Um, let's, uh... Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do Blizzard World. I sh Was Blizzard World EU or NA servers? Does anybody in chat know? I don't think it has a huge effect. Oh, I have to install Poot. Give me a second, chat. I have to install Tournament B. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to go over the gauntlet. Not, not a full review. Like, it'll be tempting. I'll probably do some review, but I'm not going to go over the full thing. <laughs> They're all in A servers? I don't think so. I think they 50-50, they didn't they? Uh, Blizzard World S. Okay. Losers could choose choose server. Does, did they actually cut out losers? What? I swear, Twitch has some serious issues. Imagine not being able to call you losers, losers. Bunch of losers. Losers, 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 losers. You're all losers. Every single one of you. Losers. Okay. Let's let's do this. I see if this works. Is that it? Nice. We got it, boys. <clears throat> what I what if I like Please stop. Please stop, easy bot. You sound just like your dad. Your dad calling you loser assume makes the uh, faulty assumption that your dad even speaks to you. Like, would you call a roach a loser? I don't think so. <clears throat> You're not worth the effort. Okay, <clears throat> get some water, and then we'll begin. Rolls up sleeves marches over to you while trombone plays a sunny you got something on your cheek winds up arm gives you a good old sucker punch your face is now a pancake. <laughs> Thank you Sherman. <laughs> I play quick play with this man and he spams these like half the time in the games. These oh they're excellent. <laughs> Thank you for the sub. <clears throat> Black Dracon uses ad permitted term herpes. Okay, all right, well. All right, so l let's talk about this in a nutshell. Um, there's a couple of questions I had about this composition. I can answer most of them. The ones that I don't feel like I can answer in full will solve as this VOD goes along. Now, this is, to be clear, a hybrid dive spam composition with a leaning towards on the spam. Now, let's talk about this. Why Ball and not Arisa? Well. A couple of reasons why. Number one, Ball is steadily a hero that main tanks in Overwatch contenders and Overwatch League have been steadily improving upon. Uh, it's like uh, heroes become more meta as players get better at them. Um, like I think we saw like people not didn't realize exactly how busted Sigma was. It took a little time, right? It took a little time for people to realize how busted Orisa was. To, you know, team, it took a little time. It took a little time for people to realize how busted BAP was. A little how busted you know the 250 HP or 225 HP Brig still was, right? Um, but like teams have had a lot like these main teams have had a lot of time to practice ball, especially teams like uh, American Tornado, whose shape is not really a main tank player. I mean, he might be now, but he's not mechanically. I would doubt that he's mechanically proficient on heroes like Winston and Orisa and Ryan as much as he is on on ball. Um, that being said, we also have uh, you know ball has been strong for a while. People have gotten playing more and more of him, so they're they're better at him. Um, Arissa's halt nerf really hurt her contribution in spam wars because uh, it, it made it a lot like halt is just not as good of an ability. It's not awful, but it's a lot less oppressive than it used to be. And halt was the most important cooldown. I mean, outside of maybe lamp or fortify uh, in the the old spam wars, like you just halt was everything. You halted as part of your neutral. Your heart halted with every ultimate in the game. Halt was just it was the ability, and now that's significantly nerfed. 
um, other compositions are kind of coming up and, and finding ways to take space around it. Ball also is a little stronger because there's always the opportunity and option to swap Tracer, which means <clears throat> Ball inherently has more value with Tracer because outside of pull pull spam, Orisa Tracer doesn't have any inherent synergy. Um, Arisa Tracer comps were good for a little while, but Ball Tracer, you give it, there's like another hero that can follow up on whatever Tracer uh, goes for, essentially. Like, so you can actually have some legitimate dive threat. So this is literally just a spam composition like the Arisa composition, spread out, take angles, spam people out, but you do it in heavily in locations where your ball can pressure people. You're treating ball not as like, we our ball dives and everybody goes in, more as like our ball goes in, pressures either looks for a boop that you know our ash can headshot off of our echo can follow up or zen can land a right click off of we can get a discord or ball goes in hard while we also go in harder than ultimates like a slam flex a slam bob uh you know ball goes more aggressive with 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 valk like there's a lot of different things you can do one other thing to note as well is there's another dps that's been more meta uh with these spam wars because she's she's very strong is echo and echo is a hybrid spam dive if you went full spam, Echo is not quite as good. She's not quite as good as like a Hanzo, uh, Widow in some situations, etc. Um, but if you have a ball, there's a lot of situations where you're going to be upping the tempo, going in hard, and Echo is very good at making that transition from spammy to diving in hard. And, you know, beaming somebody, getting a kill, copying their tracer, going in really hard, um, that sort of thing. So you're essentially playing spam, hybrid with dive with dps and compositions that can that can also like turn the tempo up and go a little faster like i can go a little faster tracing go a little faster um so the question is why sigma that was another question we had and sigma is like he's the default spam tank like that's just it in a nutshell like there there, there it really is not very complicated he can hold space he can hold an angle he can put out constant pressure if you're running a zarya here zarya does no damage until she's too close where, where she's going to get, uh, you know, spammed out. Because remember, the Zarya has no follow-up in the brawl, right? There's no brawl here at all. Everyone wants to play distance. And if you're playing distance, you don't want to be playing Zarya. You don't want to be playing uh, D.Va because it just gets poked out. You obviously don't want to be playing Winston or Ryan. The only thing that you could maybe play is Hog. Um, but Hog bleeds ult charge. Uh, Hog can easily get discorded and nuked. Uh, and remember, Hog has been nerfed pretty significantly. Um, th if, if this was... Um, I mean, a hog does deal with ball relatively well, but that's about the only thing that your hog would do. He would mostly just bleed ult charge and obviously whole hogs useless. So Sigma is just a better hog and has been for, I mean, until they buffed hog and then they nerfed hog and then Sigma is a better hog again. So it basically spam, you play the best spam heroes. And the only reason that you're playing ball is because main tanks are really good at him. And you, you're playing around these burst windows of small, like soft dives where you're either slamming, booping, disrupting, dueling, like nothing ball does do really well too is like, let's say there's an Ash really greedy in the high ground here. Your ball can go get rid of the Ash in the high ground so that your Ash can take the high ground, right? You know, Orisa can't really do that. She can halt the Ash in the high ground, but even that is a lot less consistent. Um, now the interesting thing here is what other matchup difference do you guys notice? What is a major match of difference? And this is consistent throughout the gauntlet, which I watched about half of, that I noticed between these two teams. Brig versus Mercy, exactly. There is a big difference in which teams are running Brig versus Mercy. Now, we, you guys know that I have historically been very vocal about how I feel that Tracer is overtuned. And how if you're not playing Tracer, you're going to really struggle. Like, Tracer just forces Brig to be meta. Well, the unfortunate thing is, is that Brig has 200 HP. On this current on this patch that they're being played at so yes she can deal with tracer easier than mercy but she's not like the 225 250 hp mercy at this point in the game we may have reached a point to where it's just you just have to bite the bullet and somehow find a way to either mark tracer or ignore tracer and just win anyway because the brig isn't high enough of an hp to be consistent like brig is just too bad right now um the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, there might be a playstyle adjustment that makes it easier to deal with Tracer. Like, obviously, first off, they notice that they're on defense so that they have the positional advantage to deal with Tracer, which makes it easier. But the other thing they have to understand as well is that playing the hero's strengths, uh, I mean, Hydran is a very good Tracer, but it might just be a playstyle preference of uh, American Tornado. American Tornado is a very player-led team. Um, 
all those players very much like they're just it's the players 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 so it's really up to their decision about what they're playing um so this might just be a personal preference whereas the briggs end might just be something that the uh british hurricane wants to play into um so we're gonna take a look at this so my expectation number one is we're gonna be taking heavy spam trades around when shape goes in and i expect shape to go in during these transitions shape could go in here shape is very likely to be putting pressure right on this transition as the enemy team backline goes from here to here shape is very likely to be putting pressure uh right here anywhere the enemy team is like rotating or their backline is not quite set that's when shape goes in and that's when the ash is looking to dynamite the echo is looking to go more aggressive etc etc um the wind condition for uh the america tornado is to heavily contest the uh, tracer and the enemy echo uh, and the enemy ball like don't let them stage don't let them get flanks punish them punish them punch them and do it in uh, like open space whenever you can like spam them out as much as you can not just the you know the sigma that brings in in fact the sigma brings in are actually bait you do not want to be focusing the sigma brings in you want to be focusing on the echo tracer ball because those are the people that are going to deny your spam advantage does that make sense like if your zen is turning around having to like survive against a tracer you're, you're you no longer get any zen spam the only way you maintain zen spam is if your zen is unpressured by their tracer which means you need to be starting the focus or tracer to begin with um so you know keep the spam do not let the ball tracer echo stage hard pressure them on staging hard 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 pressure them on staging do not let them flank and hide for free and the, and the, the contrary is true for british circuit you need to be flanking you need to be staging and against this comp you probably want to be putting the briggs in on the flank immediately so like normally you'd go like okay we're gonna put our back line here and then like fight here but because your ball and echo and tracer are probably gonna get stuffed trying to stage this side you might actually want to send your briggs in up top here and clear out this angle so that you can actually flank properly i know i'm saying a lot of things does any of that make sense or does most of that make sense does none of that make sense in other words ball tracer echo want to be taking flanks to stage a dive on the squishy zen mercy but to do that they're going to get poked out if their Briggs in aren't with them to start. And the ball's job is essentially just to clear out angles and then dive once he gets follow up. Once he gets follow up, either from his tracer or diving in a location where his Ash Echo can do stuff. And where does Sig go for BH? I would, your Sig, Brig, and Zen are most likely going to function as a three man crew. Um, the Sigma provides a little bit of extra peel against the ball um especially if you have like the enemy ball slams your briggs in it's really easy for your backline to get sniped um so like when the ball slams that means that their zen their ash can kill your briggs in while they're in the air or while they're distracted so this sigma can throw his shield on the enemy ash sightline while your backline's being pressured so the sigma throws the shield and then turns around and shoots the ball and rocks the ball right and then that shield is blocking the Ash Zen from just killing your Briggs Zen. Is this going on YouTube? Probably. I mean, I, I assume so. Yeah. But the big thing is here is like, I don't want to treat this as fast or as slow because noobs would say, oh yeah, British Hurricane needs to play this fast. No, British Hurricane just needs to get pressure on the back line, but they don't have to rush it. They need to slowly fight for angles, fight for space. And then once they've, they're staged, then they need to fight for pressure on back line. Um, whereas these guys need to put pressure on like the, the, the flanks. So the, like British hurricane, this guy needs to be under pressure. This guy needs to pressure British hurricane or American tornado, this guy, this guy. And, uh, where's the echo, you know, this guy, or where's the echo there, this guy, well, I don't even know where the echo is. He needs to be under pressure. So British hurricane needs to be putting pressure on the back line. American tornado needs to be putting pressure on flankers because the flankers are what's going to contest your back line. I know this is complicated, but can you touch on the Echo Ash matchup? Why Echo Mirror on a point with little vertical cover? Um, it's because there's probably because there's just not a lot better. Like Echo is a little awkward on attack, especially into an enemy hit scan. Um, there just isn't a lot better. Hanzo is not great uh, with again with Briggs. Then you're kind of when, when you do go in, you want to be playing at a faster tempo, and, and and Hanzo tends to like once he has space, tends to want to play it a little slower. Um, so, and Hanzo doesn't really help with backline pressure, like with faster tempo stuff. Uh, you could, some teams, like at some point, I think they were playing Sombra. Um, Sombra into the, uh, Sombra would be good into this. Uh, wouldn't be great, but it would be okay. It would be, would be fine into this. Because the thing with Sombra is like, 
Um, there is no Brig to, to deny Sombra. Uh, Sombra deals with the ball relatively well. You know, Sombra really can deal with everything. The only problem with Sombra is you have like you have to be very fast with your cycles. You can't take way too long staging because uh, you loot, you fall a lot behind in spam and, and just raw damage if you do. So I actually think into the Mercy's invert, Sombra Tracer with the Brig's end wouldn't be too bad. You have a you have a difficult backline to dive, uh, and you have somebody who like remember the remember the key. British Arcane needs to win the flanks so that it can actually get to backline. And Sombra does really do pretty well against the flanks. Like if you go with your ball, their ball can't match your ball, which is what their ball needs to do, right? Most likely. Farah, no, no, no. Farah would get curb stomped by Ash Echo Mercy. That there's not a comp that would harder counter Farah, Farah than what you're seeing right now. Um, Far and Echo. I mean, Far and Echo are just different heroes. Echo is like way better. Well, Far is way better at like clumped situations, and Echo is way better when stuff is split up. Like Far is not. Far and Echo are just very, very different. Echo destroys Far in one v ones usually, unless you're using them. But like Far is just different. Far is just different. Like if they were running like uh like Sombra Tracer Monkey Diva, you'd probably like Far would probably do even more than Echo. But yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> So I'm interested to see how much American Tornado... Mar so I did not see much of this map. I saw very little bit of this. So this will be good for me. Um, I expect, again, American Tornado to check flanks, screw the enemy ball tracer Echo, and British Arcane needs to find a way to clear out and win those flank wars. Play everything at 0 0.75 just so it's easier for me to catch. Okay, so there's the BH. They're staging the back line. Or the front line. <clears throat> now, Speedily is playing hyper aggressive. Um, a little risky, but you know they don't have a hit scan really to mark him right now, so they can probably get away with that. Um, America Tornado is not even. They don't even care about this rotation. They know they can't stop them from making this rotation, so they're just going to let it happen. Now, I did predict this. This high ground clearing is good. Because now, <clears throat> Team Green, American Tornado, has to rotate properly away because they have now lost this flank. But the difference is, is American Tor uh, British Arcane can actually leave people up here and keep rotating other people. And that's how you get a pincer, if that makes sense. And American Tornado was really not able to contest that rotation much at all. So this is really good for BH. Dynad is very, 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 very off. What's going on here? Dynad. Dynad goes to peak. But he needs, like, he needs to be asking for support. He doesn't even have Harmony Orb. He doesn't have pack. Uh, I mean, does, I mean, this is strange. So you can see, see what's happening here. Do you see what's happening? They've cleared out this side of the map BH has. And they're looking to pincer dive. They're going to look to, like, Ball Tracer goes in on, and Zen, and maybe right at that same time, they look to Discord Mercy or Discord Echo and Focus Echo, right? But, and they can do that now because they've actually got a pincer. Like, Ball Tracer are set up for a dive. It took a little bit of work, though. Like, dive, chat, the reason why dive is a hard composition, it's not about, like, the timing is tricky, but it's about you actually have to, like, flank and fight for the map to even dive backline. You can't just dive backline. It just doesn't work. Like, it's, they're in two defensible locations for it to work. Um... And they have fought for this space, but this is really odd from Dennett. He probably should probably should die. Like, I, I don't understand what he was doing there. That's a miscommunication. And now BH desperately needs to chill, and they need to instantly go inside this room and turtle. And, and basically just, like, and what needs to happen is if they push this shade, uh, shade, Freudian slip, Hadi needs to go pressure either Zen or Ash if they do push. Mulfic should not be pushing here. This is silly. They need to be turtling. Oh my gosh. There's. Oh my gosh. This is really bad. 
This is really bad. That's a lot of ult charge just for absolute free. Like, you need to think every single time you see Ball Sig die, especially Ball, that's, that's legitimately 600 ult charge for free, and the support's got zero healing ult charge in exchange. They've swapped sides, but that's not the, that's actually not true. So I want you to, like, I wish I could epic pin this. On the start of the fight, American Tornado had this section of the map. Like, let me draw it with my mouse. They had this, can you guys see my mouse? Yeah, they had this whole section now. When BH cleared out this side and left people here, the ball tracer, they actually had 50% of the map. You see that? So now they can use this side, this part of their half to push this way and dive back line, and this part of the map to push this way and pressure Echo Mercy. You see that? Because it, for some reason it doesn't work with full screen and I have to go like cursor and then OBS doesn't like it. I could figure it out, but I haven't had a chance to yet. I could try. I mean, is it window? Is that gonna work? I swear if this scuffs up, I'm gonna blame you guys. Can you guys see this? So, yeah, see, this is, uh, <laughs> see, this is, this is my, oh, wait, wait, once I start to draw, it works. It's, it's going to be a little scuffed, though. So, anyway, they, they basically start with American Tornado had this section of the map. Now American Tornado has this section of the map. They had, they had won this entire side so that BH could actually pincer backline without taking echo damage. And they could actually pressure Echo, uh, where really in a location where Ash Zen sightlines are a little awkward. And you also have to understand as well, did you notice that the Zen Ultraviolet had to rotate? If every single time you make the backline rotate, there's a chance that they make a mistake, right? Now there's a chance you make a mistake too, but if you're confident in your rotations, there's a chance that Ultraviolet goes from like right up here or you know here to like here or somewhere really awkward, right? And if he does that, now he's easier to kill. Or he goes over here and runs into Ball Tracer and dies. Like, you want to make them rotate. You want to make them... They have to perfectly react to your rotation to be able to, to, to ignore it. Here's the thing, Josh. I've up, tried to update, but it just brings me to the Epic Pins phase, page. And there's nothing there. I have no idea what's going on. And anyway. Borderless windowed. Where's my mouse? Is that still going to work? It does. Okay. So Don, Dana just feeds, and then they, instead of understanding, hey, we're down one, but we can stay and hold this space if we turtle, they instead keep fighting. Is Like, I have no idea, and then they get split and die. So that is a really, really egregious error from BH. That is uncharacteristic of what we've seen from them. The Echo's alive still. Don is still alive. This rotation is going to be pretty hairy, though. Um, like, Hydra's not really in a position to contribute much. Neither is Ultraviolet, so they should be okay. Donnan is going in super aggressive. What happens here? What? What? Well, how is he going in aggressive? He lands a fat right click. Okay, now chill. I don't know, man. That's just kind of unfortunate. That That's like he goes, he knows he lands like four stickies on, and he's going to be in beam range. So he goes for the kill. I mean, you could technically say that's a mistake because, hey, you're at a too low of an HP and they have a mercy. But that that's just kind of sucky. Yeah, so like right now, you, you probably should not be peeking this, at least not as wide as he does. He gets the beam. And he goes up. Actually, that might have been the mistake right here. He should have crouched. You, he, he doesn't have to go up this high. And that makes that's a very predictable arc. So that's, again, another mechanical error from Dunnett, actually. Because he, he, he peeks out and beams, right? 
but then he goes back up again instead of just staying low and crouching or like you know even 80 80 striving because he does get harmony orb there but yeah super micro agreed um very very unfortunate trade because it's just going to get instantly rezzed spark is going to try and deny the res instead gets his head blown off howdy is also going in really hard very strangely and also dies so <coughs> micro error BA tries to follow up off of it and deny the res to keep, but instead they just get their heads blown off because this is the problem. This is why you have to actually pressure back line because do you see like what happens if you pressure front line? Like obviously we know why they were pressuring front line. They were trying to stop the res, but if the Zen and Echo or the Zen and Ash are unpressured, they will kill you instantly. Like did you see how fast that ball died? So, Dein Schutzengel ist da. and now, I mean, I mean, th this right here, this is the irony: is when there were only three of them that actually turtled better than when there were five of them. So, like, yeah, when you'd expect them to try and like, yeah, th th this is this is good. This is good. Like, this is what they should have done the previous fight. But now the problem is, is we're reaching two fight territory. BH have done nothing. They have built no ult charge outside of some, actually a decent amount of rally, which is good. Um, but we're reaching a spike toward this next fight is essentially unwinnable. Unless you play literally a perfectly clean neutral and then you're still probably gonna lose because they're gonna have one, two, three, four ultimates and you're gonna have maybe one. So like this is why the first fight specifically, and honestly, that trade right there was really bad <laughs> because it wasn't even like there was a good trade. They just got destroyed. And when you get destroyed, it snowballs because they the enemy team builds up significantly more ult charge than you do. Neutral is just the first fight when no, ult, when no ults are up. Okay. But do you see what I'm saying? How like BH is not just diving down main, that they're actually like clearing out an angle here. Now they could also go this way, but the reason why they're prioritizing, well chat, why do, why do you think BH in their attempt to dive backline are going this way and not going this way? What's the obvious difference here? This should be, this is, this should be a softball lob. Like I'm lobbing you an easy one here. What's the big difference between the two paddings? There's more cover. Exactly. That's it. There's more cover. You don't. You take. There's less of a chance for Ash and their Mercy damage boosted Echo to blow you up. Blow you up, I say. I really don't like Dana lurking behind. Dana needs to go with this team. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, so they're gonna cut this dive a little short. Um, the reason I'm not a fit. Well, the reason I'm not as much of a fan of this is because I think it's really hard for BH to properly like. C backline to get a good stage pressure on backline. Like like look at how bad Reaper's LOS is here. Like Reaper can legit Reaper can legitimately see nothing. And they can't see their own echo either, which is really bad as well. Like you want to play like you want to rotate to a sightline where you, your your Zen can actually see stuff if you can. Like obviously they have more spam damage on range, but you at least want to get your Zen on a good sightline. So British Hurricane are, are cheating here. They're not doing a full rotate. They're cutting it, they're cutting it short. Um, and they're gonna, I mean, maybe this is just their call to take a quick neutral and then win the next fight, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. Um, and I don't know why Kellex is isolating himself either because he's isolating himself as if they were going in really hard, but they're not. Their ball is not in, the tracer is not in, Dunnett is nowhere to be seen. And Kellex is positioned extremely aggressively and isolated. Yeah, he's gonna die for that too. Like, I don't know why he's there. I don't know why British Hurricane cuts this rotation short, and I don't know why Kellex isolates himself that far. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Um, like, if Kellex survives that, this, this is a very different story, because he's going to kite back with his Zen. They force Trance, and their HP is relatively high. Now, I'm a little concerned about Molfig. But they could they could punish them pushing that if they had a brick. Like you look at their HP, like Mulfig's okay. But at this point in the game, I mean, they they do get a trade in Hydran. 
they're actually continuing to, to like they're, they're they're aggressing and hard so that was good you forced valk and trance and you didn't have to use anything but pulse so that's a, that's a fine trade and this next fight is winnable but it really sucks that a fight that where you could have forced an additional ultimate or two out and maybe even one was lost because calyx just completely splits So these fights have consistently been lost due to individual errors compounded by team error. The first fight was an individual error that followed up with team error. The second fight was an individual error compounded by team error. They should have just taken the L. And this fight was an individual error that the team actually managed to follow up and, and play relatively well. I mean, Dan and Kalex have just fed. Dan has fed twice in a row. And I think this was consistently from what I was seeing, Dunnid was probably uh, the biggest weakness on BH. <clears throat> I would go so far to say, at least on this hero. He was not playing well. Now, obviously, you are playing up against arguably one of, one of the best Echoes in NA, maybe the best Echo in NA. But it was, it was tough to watch. And so far, it's been tough to watch. Hey, William Paul Clifton. Nice uh, Twitch name. All right, let me guess, you're like 55 years old? Okay, chat. <clears throat> What's the issue? What's the issue? Do you guys see, do you see the issue? I'm sorry, Midget, I don't remember asking. I'll let you know if I do, though. Balls feeding. Yeah, so this is this is again British Hurricane forcing. They're just forcing it. They're just they're just forcing it. This is like trying to you know screw in a screw in a screw with like a hammer. This doesn't this is it might work, but it's not going to work well. There he Hadi. When should Hadi be going in? When should when should he go in? You guys give me the details. I have already fed you everything you need to know about when he needs to go in. When does he need to go in? Nice, Will. Right, so when is that? When is his team ready to follow up? You guys tell me. When? Yeah, when back lay, right. The back line hasn't rotated yet. They've not completed the rotation. So now they're doing a worse rotation. Jeez. They're doing a worse rotation just to have Hadi go in before they're actually ready anyway. Like... Rotate your Sigma, oh jeez. Rotate your Sigma in, um, your Sigma brings in here first, and then go in. Not to mention, Dynad is still too low of an HP to actually follow up on anything. And, where's Sparker? Sparker's not even pushing. Sparker's not going in yet. <coughs> By the way, Ultraviolet and Unvap is interesting to note. This comp gets a little bit trickier to dive now. Yeah, when the spam is set up. Your Zen's not set up. Your Echo is not set up. Your Sigma's not set up. If you waited literally three, two, one, now, now, this this becomes an actually decent play. Now, because now your Zen's Sigma, whatever, actually have LOS to do crap, right? Again, it's it's you guys don't have to think about like. The compositional too hard like the micro is important and that and that's tricky but the macro is just do stuff as six how do you not do stuff as six that's it like that's all there is to it and i don't know why maybe somebody miscommunicated maybe how just entered i don't know but I'm, all i'm saying is why they lose the fight i also really don't like down it being split either I, but not not without a ball or tracer with him because he's just dying off of cooldown. He needs like more backline. Like he needs his Briggs and support more than he's getting, because he's just getting destroyed. Like if he if he got like perma orb or perma packed and like was allowed to go aggressive off of this stuff, maybe. But like it just feels so bad. How do you mines doesn't do anything. Tracer's not there to follow up. There's no Discord. There's no Briggs spam. There's no Sig spam. There's no Echo spam. Danid goes in hyper aggressive, completely by himself, but has zero LOS off of his backline and dies. 
I assume that he was playing the Q, but he just gets his head blown off by Speedily. So yes, micro error because he probably should have pressed Q, but also just a team-wide error. Like, how he's going in, but his team's not in a position to really go in very well. Like, this is just a feed all the way around. Danid feeds again, but timing is just awful here. This is just, just, this is just awful. Hey, Mac OP, things of this, uh, the array. Welcome. We're doing a little bit of uh, the gauntlet of the uh, EU versus NA gauntlet analysis of single map. Specifically looking at like uh, tank play. So like Molthic is pushing up right here and trying to like put some spam off of like, because like the mines forcing the drop off of high ground so we can push up, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but you know, at this point, Danid's already down, Hattie's already half HP and out. Um, and you know, Sparker's going in, but Hattie's already out. So like, you know, he's in, out, in, <laughs> out. <laughs> Thanks, I am, appreciate it. <coughs> so, poorly timed, and Danid feeds again. So they are going to commit the trance. It's a little... Mm, I mean... This is just this is a tough decision. I don't I don't blame the trans usage there. This this fight is still winnable. It's five v six. Maybe you get a backline trade. Hadi is already being bullied out. <clears throat> Sparker dies. Over stay overstays his welcome. I'm trying to watch this fight. Like what happens here? So Danny dies. They force trance. <clears throat> now this means that there is like the thing with trance is like as soon as this trance is popped, you're thinking, oh now BH can, can push now. And they can, but they don't really have a lot of teeth to their push. Does that make any sense? Like there's just not a lot of damage behind this push anymore because now your Discord and your and your Zen spam is gone. So like honestly. <laughs> America Tornado could just AFK and go hunt Ball Tracer now because there's nothing coming from this group anymore. The Echo is gone. There's no spam damage anymore. So just go hunt the ball, go hunt the dive. Go hunt the dive that's going to distract your Ash and your Bat. So that's exactly what they do. They all turn on the ball. One, two, three on ball. Tracer, again, is you know, not doing anything as a result of that. Now he's doing something. <clears throat> but ball's already gone. And now Tracer's, you know, AFK, basically. <clears throat> BH desperately needs to back out. Now, it's interesting noting here <coughs> that Shape goes in. Looks like. Yeah, so Shape goes in. This is um, pretty aggressive. Uh, they are down two, so he can probably get away with it just fine. Uh, and then he does have to follow up here, but there is a chance of him dying here because he doesn't have full Echo Mercy support. So he has to be careful. He doesn't mind it. Reaper splits in where he kites to and dies. It's not really sure if they needed mines there. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so last fight. Chat, what does BH need to do? Spoon feed it to me, please. Spoon feed it to me. What do they need to do? Yeah, so they need to hustle the rotation. They probably just need to go down main, rally once, like at the last possible second. Um, and then Danon needs to go in really hard and try and probably try and take this high ground away and copy Sigma. If Danon is able to take this high ground and copy Sigma, um, he's gonna, like, this should be a one fight for BH, but it's gonna depend on a couple of things. But yeah, the touching won't be a problem, they, they've got time. This rally is really early. I do not like this rally. This rally is like you should be rallying now. Right now. When you should be rallying. This rally is absurdly early. Um so yeah, they have to cut the rotation short. Shape is trying to deny, like just kind of contest Sparker, but Sparker has armor and Danid with him, so that's not gonna really work. 
Again, the rally is just so early. I doubt They're hard focusing cucumber, but because rally has already essentially expired, it has expired. They can they are, they can't really press W. Like right now, you should have another four seconds on your rally, and you should be able to literally just W on cucumber and kill him. Like literally just W and kill. Like that's the thing with rally. Rally allows you to like actually just like go in and kill the sigma. Like just especially if he's playing as aggressively as cucumber is, just walk in and get kill the kill the sigma. Cut panicking? Probably. Yeah, probably panic. Because it's last fight, you're like, oh, I don't want to not use my ultimate. Like, what if I got bursted, you know, and they bopped or something like that? Um, but not good. Now, Danid is going in really hyper-aggressive. The problem here is, of course, that he goes in hyper-aggressive, but he doesn't have the copy on the Sigma available, which is really bad. Um, you know, it's an unfortunate. Uh, you know, it doesn't, like, look so much like an air in his end because Cucumber was all the way over here, but you, there really isn't a, like... Copying their ball would be okay because of their comp, but he's gonna have to copy Ash. Looks, yeah, he's gonna copy Ash, which ain't great. Gets a nice dynamite there. Cucumber dies. Oh, how? Danon's gonna die. Now let's see what we got here. This should just be GGs right here. If you, if if we, if this flux hits this here, it should be GGs. But you see, like, this is what, this is where you want, this is like, if you are BH, this is what you want. Like, this is the kind of battle that you want, where, like, obviously your HP isn't great, but neither is uh, America Tornado. But, like, you see how, like, you see how, like, they have angles? Like, Dennett is not really doing a lot with his angle, and he scuffed up his copy, but they have good angles. They have, they're surrounded, their backline is set up, and notice the distance. Like, don't think about tempo, fast versus slow. Think about distance, right? Brig versus Tracer. Brig, excuse me, Brig Tracer versus Mercy Ash. If you're in their face, that's kind of where you want to be at right now. And essentially, BH has managed to close the distance so that they're now on top of American Tornado. So if you're going to win a fight, this is going to be how you win a fight. It's a fat flux. Monstrous flux. That should be it right there. Took way too long <coughs> to get their backline set up, though. <coughs> way, way too long. Okay. Now, this is where things are going to get hairy. Kalex is probably swapping to Mercy right now um, because the. Remember, the whole brig is that you clear out an angle with your brig and then you could put backline pressure. But the difference is, is it's going to be very difficult to state to like play at that brawly, faster, close to distance, clear out an angle pressure because the sight lines here are so stinking long. Like they're so stinking long. Like, yeah, as with Brig, you'd be able to make this rotation here and then you'd be able to clear out this here. But, you know, then what? Then you still have like a million miles to cover. Um, so probably going to swap Mercy here. Um, and BH needs to either make this rotate to here, the push cart, get the cart to about here, and then make this rotate, and then aggressively clear out this rotate here while your tracer pincers from back here, uh, or from here. Or you're going to need to clear out this high ground from this side. Same thing. Tracer comes underneath, tracer comes from behind this way, or tracer comes from behind this way. Because you're obviously not going to be able to walk out here and outspam them. Because their Zen is already set up, your Zen is not. They have a choke to spam, yada, yada, yada. Um, but you, you're you going to need to like, like get one of those angles cleared out. <clears throat> yes, go to bed, child. So now all BH needs to do is just chill, like farm ult if you want to, and just push card. Don't, don't go so crazy. Chill, chill, chill. Spam out Cucumber. Nice. Careful. Okay. Uh, I don't really love Reaper's positioning here. I don't really like the backline positioning in general. I like them to kind of lean this side and just hard pocket Mulfic as he pushes cart. Hadi should also be avoiding taking damage right now. Um, he could mark uh, Shape if Shape is going in really hard to prevent Shape from diving backline, but he didn't. He doesn't need to be doing anything. Like Shape needs to stage, or how do you need to stage once they're actually in a position to dive backline, but they're not in a position to dive backline right now. They're just pushing cart. Uh, 
Yeah, see, this is kind of what you want to do. You want to play like really conservatively, really safe. I'm still not really happy with Repo's positioning. He's two out in the open here. Um, but this is kind of what you want to do. You bait them into using mines here. And now you can just like, you've pushed cart far enough. You can spam shape out. Shape has to leave. And then you can go take high ground. And they've also wasted an ultimate as well. Like you could legit go take high ground now and use your own mines and trace a pincer. And you're going to 100% get a kill on their zen. Like 100%. They'll have to valk and they might get the res. But then you have like all the space in the world for your own Sigma and Zen. So this is going fine for BH. They just needed to survive this mines, which they should, because like, look at the enemy team. Where's the follow-up to this mines? Where is it? The Zen and Sigma are completely out of the fight. The Echo, maybe. The Ash, maybe. But that's it. Like, that's it's still a 3v6. You'll, you, you take those. They kite out. Nice. You can even spam Echo out as well. I don't know why Hadi is so low. Hadi is taking a lot of unnecessary damage. Okay, now I'll go clear high gun from you, please. Like right now, like look, look, even look at their positioning here. Like right now is a perfect time to just go take high gun. Like right now, go take high gun. Put your, you could put, you know, your tracer can worry about cart and you could take high gun. Because they cannot push your tracer. They can't, they just can't. Because as soon as they push your tracer, your tracer can be orbed on cart. She can just AFK until you guys push high gun and then she can start to pressure cart. So at this point, you don't even need your tracer to pincer back on. You could just use your tracer to push cart. Like this is a fundamental aspect of this second point is you need to contest high ground and find out who's dealing with or pushing cart. And having a tracer is like a life hack on this map. It makes it so much easier to worry about cart. Okay, so like, like legit, look at this. Look at this guy, look at this guy. Can you imagine if they just walked out here? He would instantly die. He would almost instantly die or you'd have to instantly drop, which means that ultraviolet would also have to drop or die and maybe they would both die in uh, like like you know drop maybe he doesn't drop fast enough and he dies anyway they drop from high ground which means that you can heavily support your tracer and cart like american tornado can't comfortably flip the map because if their zin starts to rotate then he starts to get pressured and dove by ball tracer like they don't like moving a lot they're scared of moving because you have a tracer your tracer can dive them and <laughs> i mentioned Yeah, so I, I'm 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 baffled why British Hurricane's not pushing cart. They're shooting an echo. Like what? I, I don't understand. Like the entire reason, the entire strategy on first point blizzard world was you needed to clear, rotate this way or rotate this way. Even when they did it scuffed at the end, they still rotated in a way where they could tuck this in in an angle. They just, even when they had 12 seconds, they still did a rotate to clear out map control. Now, they're just AFK and main. I, I don't understand. What? This is just bad Overwatch. Like, <clears throat> I'm sure they played a lot better on the other maps. Maybe this was just a bad map, but it's really clear to me. If this is the map BH lost, I think they did lose this. It's really clear to me why they lost this map. Like, they just, they're just pushing main. Why are you pushing main? I mean, you guys remember when I coached Hanamura not long ago and... All the teams that just went down main on Hanamura and didn't try and clear high ground, how they just instantly lost again and again and again. It's, just, it's the same concept here. Like, this isn't very complicated. If you go to main, they're going to spam you. They're going to spam you from up here. They're going to spam you from up here, and you're just out in the open. <clears throat> like, if you're going to, even if you're going to push main, you would want to put your Zen, like, in here, right? And, like, Maybe, and then eventually, like what we said, do this rotate here. Not, not here. He, not, he, don't stand here. Like, I know that he got booped into it, but don't even stand here. This is just poor Overwatch. I don't know, man. This is not, this isn't, this is not, this isn't, like, I, I, I agree with Chad. This is, we probably could have picked a better map for sure. But 
this is a pretty good map to explain what we're talking about, how this composition is supposed to be played. You're using your, you know, either your brig, your mercy pocket, your echo, your ball, but you need to clear out these angles so your backline can take them. They're just AFK on main. Yes, it could have been an option game player route. Yes, absolutely. The only reason I think the Sigma, the Sigma is a little easier to push cart, Tracer is easier to contest. Uh, if they had just had Tracer pushing cart from the start without a little bit of Sigma help, Tracer might have got poked out a little early. Hadi, Hadi is not, should not be doing this. Oh, they are going for a res. Never mind. Hadi can get away if, if they're going for a res. Because now they can't, like, poke them out. Okay, so now they're going to rotate right or they're going to rotate. Like, like, you just can't rotate this now. Like, 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 you just can't, like, you just can't. Like, I just, I just, you just can't. Trance, trance. Okay, they do get a trade. How do you mines? What? What did, what did he mine? So, kind of an interesting mine. They go for a dive, and he also commits mines on it. But not really very great. And there's not a lot of frontline pressure off of this either. That being said... <clears throat> I mean, the mines just didn't do a whole lot. <clears throat> the mines was a necessary. The kill was already there. They had already given up space. Now you would want mines. Uh, OG has active Valk. BH has nothing. And again, like, I just don't understand. Again, like this is this is why you go you don't like this is just fundamental Overwatch. This is a awful rotation. Even once you trade there, if you okay, you killed their Ash, uh, they killed your whatever Echo. Stop. Go high ground. Let your tracer ball worry about cart. Like you can't. You just can't. Like this is just bad. They're making the same mistake over and over and over again. Please clear high ground. Please, I'm begging you. Speedily feeds. Nice. Speedily goes way too aggressive. Speedily is just dissing, like at that point. They go in for a dive. Nice. Nice. Now just chill. How does how they die? How does how they die? This seems like a really weird engage from Hadi. Yeah, he stays a little too long here. He gets rocked. They do get the kill, though. Oh, speedily just nukes him. He gets a fat right click. That's a little un unfortunate. Not a huge deal. But they get split. What is, what, what is happening? Like, how are they losing this? They actually push high ground for once. Instantly get a kill. <clears throat> They trade for another, maybe a little bit of an overextension. Now, all they have to do is just chill. Just chill. Sparker needs to chill. Sparker desperately needs to chill. He's not chilling. Yeah, Sparker, Sparker, Sparker does not chill. Sparker needs to chill. You get two kills, you need to chill. You need to not continue to overextend and force it when you're down resources. British Hurricane, American Tornado. So Sparker forces a play. Hadi also forces a play. Like when you get an advantage, chill. You've blown everything you've got. Don't keep going. He kept going. Then it again gets a terrible copy. I mean, again, like what? Wait, what? Why are they out? Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. There's not a lot to say here, chat. They just get split and evolved. British Hurricane did a very poor job of map control, a lot of individual ints on the first attack, and then once they finally go for high ground, they instantly get rewarded, but then they overextend once they already have an advantage and they lose two people. Like, once you already get an advantage, don't keep going. Just chill. Make them come to you. Like, just at that point, just put one person on a cart and just spam and keep pushing. There's not a lot to say there. It's just bad. <clears throat> okay. They're going to run uh, Briggs Zen. Uh, echo defense. So, like this, this composition, you're essentially saying, okay, we're gonna make it so that our backline is not diveable, which means that your backline can play a little bit more aggressive. Now, <clears throat> interestingly enough, they're gonna play tracer into this. Now, Hydran should not be able to get a lot done in tracer here, at least in the first fight. What <clears throat> BH wants to do into this, if possible, is like let them rotate a little bit, and then when they do rotate. Look to pressure their backline, like pressure their backline during these rotates because their backline's a lot greedier. Um, so what you do is you time Danid's pressure on their Echo around your ball's pressure on their Zen. You pack Danid, discord their Echo or Mercy or whatever, and make it so that their Mercy has to pick and choose who she helps. So let's see what happens here. What? What happens here? Then it's positioning is kind of trash. I think he's too far away. Like, Speedily should not just be able to W key forward like this in here. Like, I don't know why he's playing this far back. They're looking to make an aggressive play at some point. Anyway, he should be positioned, like, up here. Or, like, even... Um, you could even honestly put Dennett, like, right here. Because they have to walk into your Zenyatta's LOS to turn the pressure on it. I do not like Dennis positioning here, and then this is just stupid from Reaper. I don't know, like I don't even know what they're I don't know what the game plan was here. This is just trash. And I don't like the I don't like the decision either by Hadi to backline trade the ball here. They have to make an awkward rotation and they have a more diveable backline. This should not be what they should be going for. This should not be now if they were also running Mercy's in, it's understandable because then you can just play it slow and chill. But they're running Mercy Zen, you're running Briggs Zen. Look at their Zen. Look at Ultraviolet's positioning right now. This is absolutely free. Absolutely free. And they're chasing a ball who, while you already have a Brig to deal with him. I don't know. This is just, this is just poor. Like... It's prob at this point it was probably like some mint like mental boomed or distracted or frustrated or tilted or tired or who knows what the mental thing was in here, but like this is not good overwatch. And once you're instead it's GG's. So Danid's out of position. Hadi and Sparker are just doing the wrong things. They're letting this very squishy backline rotate completely for free to go chase a ball. And Reap is just kind of out of position. No, he shouldn't be marking the ball in that matchup. Maybe if their backline wasn't rotating, but their backline is literally rotating and you're letting them rotate for free. Chat, does that make sense? If you have a Mercy Zen backline, very squishy, easy to kill heroes. If you're playing a dive hero, you're trying to get pressure on those guys. Right? If you're if you're trying to kill those Mercy Zens or pressure the Mercy Zens. Because they do a lot of damage, right? But if you're running a Brig Zen versus a Mercy Zen, you're running a Brig to make it harder for their ball to do anything and the Tracer to do anything. It's a lot harder to pressure a Brig Zen than it is a Mercy Zen. So you're not as concerned about your backline. 
You want to hurt their back line. Like what? Marking is essentially playing slow. It's stopping their ball from diving. But it means if you mark, you're doing so at the expense of your ability to, to dive. Does that make sense? If I'm Tracer and I'm fighting the enemy Tracer, I'm not fighting the Zen. I'm fighting the enemy Tracer. So I only mark the enemy Tracer if I know, hey, I have a Zen, they have a Moira. I'm not going to be able to kill Moira anyway, so I might as well mark their Tracer instead. Right? Because if, if I keep my Zen alive, we'll beat their Moira. Does that make sense? So if you can, if the squish your backline, that's when you don't want to mark. That's when you want to go in and kill. If you have a tanky backline, or if you have a tanky backline, you need to go in and kill. If you have a squishy backline, that's when you want to mark. Because you know your back, if you stop them from pressuring your backline, you're just going to win. <clears throat> like Shape is ironically, even though he's on attack, is the one that wants to mark. Usually marking is undone in defense because you already have the space. But Mercy versus Zen, Break versus Zen, especially with this awful, very awkward rotate here. Like, this is where you'd normally see a ball just go ham, right here. But, you know, nowhere to be seen. It looks like British Turkey didn't have a plan for this map. Or they had, they were, or they were bad at this map. It looks like it. It might not be. Maybe they just scuffed it up mentally, but it sure looks like this. So <clears throat> what British Hurricane needs to be doing is they need to be like looking for aggressive plays on this. Like what I want British Hurricane to do is find somebody to stop cart like your ball or tracer. But like at some point you want to push up aggressively and try and kill Cucumber. <clears throat> Don't let him spam out your angle for free. Because remember, as long as the open spam sightlines are available, the Mercy is going to beat the Brig. So you need to close the sightlines so that the Brig does more than the Mercy. And the only place that you can close sight lines without just sitting on cart where you're just going to get surrounded and killed is right here. Now, if American Tornado did like a rotate up into here <clears throat> with their back line, then you could also just run into them and go in there with your brig and smash them and bash, right? But that's not happening here. So you really the only thing you have to push on is this right here. <coughs> <coughs> what about if both back lines are squishy or both tanky? Then it's a playstyle preference and whichever team has better position. So if your Zen is on high ground here and their Zen's on the choke, <clears throat> um, you can either try and punish their Zen for being in a bad position or you can mark the enemy ball and let your Zen keep better positioning. Do you guys remember the Jonak and Sabiolbi? You guys remember jo Joke and Sabiolbi? Uh, the joke about Sabiolbi and, and Jonak. What was the deal with Sabiolbi and Jonak? What was Sabiolbi's play style and why? Do you guys remember that? From season one? Everybody talked about it. <clears throat> Sabiolbi is supporting Nebus. Right. Sabiolbi would just permanently fight their tracer. Protect the present. Right. He would mark the enemy tracer because he always knew that if Jonak was saved, he would do more damage than the enemy Zen. Always. Yes. <clears throat> so New York Cell Series playstyle was like, hey, we'll let your Zen survive. We're not going to dive pressure your Zen as much because we just know that if your tracer doesn't kill our Zen, we're going to win fights. So that's where, even if you're playing mirror, you're relying on your Zen to just be mechanically better. What if you had a crazy dive crew, you know, crew that liked going in aggressive? Well, then you'd play almost like sacrifice your backline. You'd play more like of the brig style, where you didn't have to worry about your backline, you could focus on aggressing. But that's, that's exactly what we're talking about here. Why is your cold run brig, double shield, or blizzard world, and blizzard I mean, um, <clears throat> I mean, I haven't coached compositions or scrims with sure cold for several weeks uh i helped them with some mental stuff with some team meeting stuff with some like uh different various like mic uh like like mental stuff like there were like there's some difficulty things that they were going through i helped them with but i have not been coaching them with compositions so i don't know why 
I think they were confident in that composition, and it clearly wasn't a bad composition on that map. Um, but yeah, if against BH they should have beat, they threw Blizzard World. Sugar Cold should have won Blizzard World, very very handily. Uh, they threw both second and third point with old advantages and with map control advantages. It was painful to watch, which is why Pine never got to play exactly because like you can't, you know, you can't permanently pocket Pine and Jonak at the same time. You need complementary play styles, not conflicts, right? So I really want to see the for them to get value out of this brig here, you need like they need to be like going in. Like right now, like you could be going in. Like go in and, and kill cucumber maybe. I'm not a huge fan of the distance that that's that's being played right now by uh, BH. Because remember, <clears throat> it's not about who wins fast or slow. It's about who's playing the range that they're effective at better and for longer. Mercy Echo has been spamming here essentially nonstop since they've capped. Brig has done nothing but armor pack. There has been no opportunity, at least there's been no given opportunity for them to actually go in and get Inspire proc or to get anything out of having a non-divable backline. Essentially, not I will back play. So this is not about fast or slow. They could have played very slow and hidden from the Mercy spam. Or hard-focused Echo and forced her to not be able to spam. But instead, they're staying out in the open. They've done nothing to stop or hide from this spam from the Mercy pocket. And now they're starting to fall behind in HP. Not only that, but also in positioning as well. You see what's happened. This is problematic. Find a new insult. Okay, let's uh let's dig up my insult chart here. <clears throat> okay, after watching so much of this gameplay from British Hurricane so far, I am genuinely excited to never have to review their gameplay ever again. It's the best thing that's happened to me all day to know that I will never have to do this again. There's your <laughs> Little burst of brig value there. <clears throat> he got inspired Brock and denied Ball from doing too much. Poggers. Wolfig is in serious trouble. Yeah. Adaptive circuits engaged. They do Oh, Reapa dies. That's really bad. Did Kellex not have an armor pack or was was it just a kill anyway? Oh, that's so bad. You run a brig and your Zen dies anyway. To solo ball dive. How did that happen? That should never happen. That's like running Widowmaker and getting out sniped by the enemy Lucio. He just gets distracted. If he proc if he drops and procs and spire, he drops what? He drops this way instead of actually going in. Now, I think he already has Inspire proc <clears throat> Or he would be able to. Questionable, actually pretty questionable armor pack usage here. Wait, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm thinking of the wrong thing. And just that one mistake, he is late to peel for Reaper, and they lose this fight. I don't review owl matches. I, I, was, <laughs> I was joking. You know, so will probably review London Spitfire at some point. Ah, that's not good. That's not good at all. That's a, that's a micro error from Kellex. Uh, and honestly, like, it's not just a micro error, though. Because remember what we said? Like, BH was standing AFK out in the open against damage-boosted Echo for probably 15 seconds. At which point, the shields are down, armor packs are down, they've given up space, and then they go in hard. Like, did you notice that the comp that was playing, that should be playing slow, quote-unquote slow, actually went faster? Did you notice this? But when did they go fast? 
They spam, 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 spam. Now we go in hard, but you're going hard in the long spam ranges after you've already softened them up. So again, I don't want to I don't want to hear fast and slow. I just want to hear you played your ranges better. AT played the ranges way better than BH did. BH had a brig and played it like they had a Mercy Ash. It's not good. And this should be GG's. Uh, I mean, BH's just looked very lost on this map. Um, on second point, they looked very lost on defense and attack. First point, um, defense looked a little clunky. First point, attack looked okay. First point, attack can essentially be just boiled down to individual errors and the team like compounding off of it. I don't think they had a bad strategy for the map. I think the strategy on first point was fine. Um, second point, they looked lost. They just looked just honestly atrocious um, all the way through. And just not, they got nothing out of the brig. They got nothing, very, very little out of the brig. Uh, Danid looked uh, honestly like he was being, like, honestly played scared consistently uh, the entire map. He played scared as if he was, like, basically just scared of dying this speedily again. Um, that meant that he was essentially doing nothing the whole map. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's my take on it anyway. Do you guys have any questions? This doesn't bode for... I mean, America Tornado is the best team in Western contenders. Like, they're they're better than BH. I mean, they proved they're better than BH. At least in this meta. It was close, but they're better than BH in this meta. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're far and away the best NA team. It's not even close. Like, the reason why I, I think that North America has uh, the worst region is just because... AT is literally the only competitive NA team, but they are very good. <coughs> um, so BH, not great. Not great, but a great team. Just not, just didn't look great there. Where are the heals from Mercy or Brigitte going when running this comp? I mean, it's situational. Like, Another reason why you run Sigma and not something like a hog is because like Sigma demands very like even less healing arguably than a hog does. Um, so Sigma demands basically no healing at all. Tracer demands basically no healing at all. Ball is somebody that you harmony orb between fights or between pressure windows. You want to try and harmony orb your echo when you can. Um, if you're playing Zen Mercy, then you don't need to harmony orb your echo. You can pretty much harmony orb your ball or tracer 24-7. You're playing Brig Zen. <clears throat> Heals are going for you want to save an armor pack for your Zen pressure generally, um, but you can pretty much just pocket your ball or, or echo. It's basically you want your Sigma and Tracer taking as little damage as possible, just playing smart, and your ball using health packs uh, as much as possible, and then you can save your armor packs or damage boost. Yeah, you you if you looked at the healing stats for Zen and Mercy. They're generally very low outside of ultimates. Very low. Uh, Zen healing, if, if it's at all high, it's only because he's harmony orbing ball between fights to build ult charge. But there's not a lot of healing done on either side. Um, you're playing low resource demand heroes um, and the uh, tracer ball sigma. And it's trying to, as much as you possibly can, your armor packing or damage boosting for kills and you're into win, into win fights, basically. You're not just throwing out your healing like you don't want to be you know beaming your sigma you want to be beaming your echo because that's how you win fights that's how you're going to win angles okay do you have any other questions okay if not we're going to find somebody to host. I appreciate you guys coming in. Um, a little bit of a different stream. I do have to catch up on VODs still. There is going to be a change to VODs in the future. Uh, but for now, we're going to keep them sub-VODs. Um, let's find a small stream to host. Do you guys have any suggestions? <laughs> 